Hey, this is my 1999 Toyota 4Runner behind me, and chances are, if you're watching this video, you've had something like this happen before. Okay, now to be 100% honest with you guys, the bulbs behind the tachometer hadn't been working for a period of time and then of course today as I'm on my way back from the dealership, they just so happened to kick on. That's how it goes it seems, but nonetheless we are going to be taking the instrument panel out and I'll show you guys exactly where the bulbs are as you go to replace them and what type of bulb you need to set your instrument panel back to the OEM spec. Now with any job you want to make sure that you have all of your tools before starting the job find it's just a lot easier that way. So for this job, it's pretty straightforward. You just need a Phillips head screwdriver, a 10 millimeter socket with a 3 8 inch extension and your ratchet, of course. And then I also have my bulbs and I'll list these part numbers down below. And I got them from Cobb County Toyota. And you can see it only totaled out to be about $12.85. So the first step is to remove the four 10 mil bolts that are holding this bottom piece of plastic on. They're located, uh, well you can't really see this one, but there's one here, and then there's another one here, and then two down below, one here, and then there's another one over here. So it's just symmetrical. So let's go ahead and take those out. Alright, so once you have those four bolts out, this bottom panel will just kind of separate off and just be gentle when you're going to wiggle it as these vehicles are older. So there you have it, it'll drop right on down and next up is we want to take off this piece of plastic around the key. and you can just set this off to the side. Okay, now at this point we're ready to take off this little outer fascia of, that's covering up the instrument panel itself and it's held in by four screws, one of which was here and I've already taken that one out, one of which is down here below and you can see there's like a little tab that's attached to this uh, panel and it's right here. And then the last two, let me see if I can frame those up for you guys, are actually up tucked underneath um, the panel itself and you can see there's one uh, and then the second one is just symmetrical to it. So now we're going to go ahead and slide it on out and just be gentle when you go to take it out. Make sure you have the steering wheel all the way down in the tilt position. So if you have it up here, make sure it's all the way down. This gives you the most amount of room and then we'll just kind of slide it out. All right, so now at this point, I have the cover off to this side. Uh, it's kind of hard for you guys to see, but it's, it's just right over here. And uh, I've left the dimmer switch for the dash attached. Uh, and you know, you can just kind of swing it around and leave it attached uh, as we finish out this job. Next up, we've got the four screws that actually hold the instrument panel in place. And these are also going to be very obvious. Um, on the instrument panel itself. So now that we have those four screws taken out, we can now remove the instrument panel itself. Now just be careful when you go to do it. There are five connections back behind, but each connection has its own unique uh, male to female 
uh, connections, so don't worry about mixing them up, but do be careful as you pull the instrument cluster out. Yeah, some of these can be a bit tight, so just be patient and make sure that you're pushing the little prong down enough so that it slides out. <laughs> all right, now I have all five disconnected, so I can gently bring this out. All right, boom, there you have it. And now note, these are all of your adapters. And you can just let them hang there. Again, they all have a different connection, so you don't have to worry about mixing them up. Now again, the main bulb in question is the drive light. That's part number 83120-620. And then the other one was the bulb behind the tachometer, which is now working again. But nonetheless, I bought two of those, and that is part number 910-06. 034. So now we're going to go ahead and flip this cluster around and you'll get a, a view of what's going on, on the back side and uh, there's a lot going on but it's pretty easy once you get a feel for it and after you look at a diagram and I'll leave the link of the diagram that I looked at in the description but really we have all of our bulbs down here and it's super easy you just look at the front side and then follow it back to the back and figure out what bulb you need to take out and replace so for me the bulb in question that I was looking at was this one right here along with a potential center bulb uh, that is back behind this circuit panel and then there is of course the drive bulb which is going to be the one two three fourth bulb in from this middle section so if here is the P R N D this will be our drive bulb that we need to remove and it is as simple as twisting it counterclockwise just a little bit and it'll pop right out. So after further inspection, that bulb was definitely blown and you could see that the filament was broken. So now I have my new bulb that I've pulled out of the bag and I'm just gonna go ahead and set that one in just the way it should. And then just be careful with it, be gentle, and then turn it clockwise until it seats like the rest of them and you should be good to go with that one. Now remember the bulbs in question at this point are the main backlighting bulbs. That's going to be this green one right here and then again there's a green one underneath this circuit panel. So we're going to start with this one right here and to remove it there's two Phillips head screws that you need to loosen in order to free this bulb out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right, so that bulb is out, and I don't know if you guys can tell all that well. I'll try and focus it in for you. But you can see that bulb looks pretty burnt, and that green filament on the outside looks as if it is cooked. Here for reference, I have one of the new bulbs on the right-hand side, and then the burnt-out bulb on the left. So I'm going to go ahead and install that new bulb, and hopefully we will have no problems. And just like that, it's back into place. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten up these two screws. All right, so again, the last bulb in question is back behind this circuit panel. And it looks as if somebody has most definitely been here before because it seems as if there should be a screw here here, here, as well as the two up top, and maybe a last one up here, yet there are only two screws in this circuit board or holding it down, so I'm going to go ahead and remove those and uh, check out how this bulb looks back behind this panel. All right, so now the last little bulb is down underneath, and you can see it right there in the middle of the screen with that dark green back. And I'm gonna use a pair of needle nose pliers to loosen that bad boy up, and then pull it out and replace it with the new one. Okay, so I got the second bulb out, and I actually found it easier to go back and actually re-remove this little piece, taking out those 
two screws and that giving me a little bit more room to pull this board up and take out the second bulb. So I'm going to go ahead and get the second uh, new bulb back in there and uh, wrap this whole job up. All right, now that I have that new bulb in there in that middle slot, we're going to go ahead and put everything back together just the way that we took it off. Try not to lose any of the screws. All right, now we have this circuit board tightened back up along with this plate, and I did want to mention before I put this cluster back into the car, there are three different types of bulbs, two of which we replaced. That would be one black bulb, and I believe it was this drive bulb right here. And then we have the three backlighting green bulbs, and there is one here on the left-hand side. There's the one in the middle that we replaced and the one on this far right-hand side that we also replaced. And the third bulb is this gray bulb bulb. All of these can be found on the diagram that I've listed in the description. Alright, so now we've got the instrument cluster back in here and we're going to reconnect all those cables just the way that we disconnected them. So starting from the far side here, whoop, starting from the far side and then working our way in. All right, so now we have all the connections back together and it's always good uh, to practice what the industry does and make sure that you push and then pull all of those connections because you don't want to have to be fiddling around trying to figure out why it's not working. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and give it a test. And it looks as if it works. You can see we get that nice green light. And then over here on the right, as I suspected, when I pulled those old green bulbs out, I realized that, well, if both of those had fallen apart, surely that last one had. So I should have ordered three. You can see the bulb still works, but obviously the green filament on the outside or that green coating on the outside has burnt through and fallen off. And so that's a nice white yellowish light. And then the rest is green. Nonetheless, we have all working lights, and I'll go ahead and now show you the drive light. Do note that the drive light will be a dimmer green. It's kind of hard to see on the video, but by design, that is how Toyota does it, and you can see that it now works. Alright guys, that basically wraps up the video. From here on out, you're just putting everything back together the way that you took it apart. So four screws for the instrument panel, four screws for that fascia that goes around it. Then you're going to put that plate over the ignition uh, key ring. And then you want to gonna put that plate back underneath, uh, or that belly pan type deal underneath the steering column and you'll have those four bolts that you put in there. For me, looks as if I need to order one more bulb so that everything is green, but at least now I know everything works as it should and I have my drive light back. So check out that uh, link in the description to find the bulbs that you need if you're wanting to go back to an OEM spec on your third gen 4Runner. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.